What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. I feel like rocking a sick outfit today with the over the ear headphones. Only because my AirPods are dead. They're right, they're right there getting charged up on the NoCo jump box. So we're officially back from, uh, I guess, Christmas vacation. And we are ready to just jump back on and get some freaking work done. Gave all the roads around the property a good grading yesterday. Probably honestly one of my favorite things to do. Super relaxing. And then when you see nice fresh dirt like that behind me, oh, it just looks so good. Now, unfortunately, while on vacation, I uh, got a little bit of the old Kung Flu. Really wasn't too bad, but kind of took the wind out of my sails for a day or two. And in an effort to just not be that guy and give it to everybody, I have not gone and picked up all of the materials to start framing the shed. So I'll take you down and show you guys the foundation in a second, show you what the rain did to it. But first, we are making our way up to the pergola. I've got the pressure washer in the back. And I'm gonna see if we can pressure wash some of this old paint off. And we've got about a third of a tote of water here to do it with. James is currently borrowing the coyote tractor, so I don't really have a way to take this tote down right now and fill it up with some more water if we need it. But we'll see how far a third of a tank gets us. All of these supports could come off today because we are obviously super rooted into the ground. This thing is solid and not going anywhere. I made this adapter piece to go from the two inch coming off of the tote to a three quarter inch hose line. Now remember, if you guys are purchasing PVC and you wanna to connect to a hose, if you look in the standard PVC section, you're gonna see a three quarter inch uh, threaded coupling. That is usually not the right one. The thread pattern is different for a garden hose than it is for a three quarter inch, uh, just a three quarter inch just PVC fitting. So make sure sometimes at Home Depot, these pieces are in a separate section. So just be mindful when you purchase that because your garden hose will not go on properly and it'll leak like crazy if you don't get the right one. But this should thread right on to our tote. Now hopefully, you know, we can draw enough water out of here, just gravity feeding it to the pressure washer. I think if I put the pressure washer over there, we are downhill just a little bit and I got a really short hose. So we're not trying to, you know, run the water through a big old hose before it gets to the pressure washer. So got all the bracing pulled off and then I just noticed the short little like six foot hose that I brought over here. The end is a little bit wonky there and I tried to screw her in but obviously she's a little too wonky. So thankfully I had a little bit longer hose, not a super long hose, but uh, I hope it's not too long that we don't lose pressure, you know, trying to drain from here to there. I set the pressure washer so it is lower. So hopefully, you know, gravity will kind of do its thing and get it over to there. But let's fire this up. Let's see if we have water. See if this works. Look at that. Look at that a high pressure. Oh. Okay, maybe, maybe we don't have water. Maybe it's because the hose is uphill. That probably makes more sense. All right, we're just gonna, we're just gonna hope we have water to this thing. Let's fire her up. Choke action. Let's see if we got water. It's not good, we have no water. Okay, well that's really gonna screw up my whole plan. Let's see if we disconnect this. Might've just had air in the line. Or maybe it's sucking air now. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that's probably not the right rate of flow. Oh, put it back down. No, no, there we go. We probably need a little more water than that. Let's see, does taking the lid off increase water flow? Negative, so the tank's already vented pretty good. All right, let's screw this back on. Ugh, we just might need more head pressure, which means we need to go higher. Well, I moved it a little further downhill and uh, we got pressure. It's probably not, I don't know, maybe it is enough water to supply the pump. Hopefully it is and we don't burn up the pump, but I think the pump will let me know if there's no water going into it. So let's see what happens to some of this old flaky paint. That actually worked really well. I should have started at the bottom and worked my way up so I'm not getting dripped on the whole time, but uh, all right, ready, set, go. Let's strip some paint.
Okay, well, that actually did go better than I had expected. Thankfully, I had my heat wave sunglasses on to protect my eyes from all the flying water and crap. If you guys want to get you a set of heat wave sunglasses, heatwavevisual.com, use code DMAXRHINO10 for a discount. You can definitely tell the posts and the rest of the lumber that was uh, in the sun the most because, well, we almost took off all the paint. Uh, and really, if I wanted to like totally geek out on it and spend forever out here, I could have probably stripped all the paint off pretty decently. It's definitely more trouble than it's worth. When I go to repaint this, you might see like a little bit of the difference from where the paint that's on there is and the new paint, but you know, it's rustic. I didn't want it as rustic as it was, but you know, it's rustic out here and it's for family and friends just to come hang out up here. So it's not that big of a deal, but it did need a little freshening up. We made it pretty much exactly to our water supply there. You can see we were probably, let's see, we were about right there with the water. Definitely used a good amount of water, that's for sure, but She's looking pretty solid. I mean, all the lumber is pretty good up underneath. I fixed that one split two by six that was right there. We do still need to grab a bunch of one by threes to kind of finish out the top section, but this is like not a super high priority thing. This was just, uh, I know we needed to bring it up here and get it assembled. As soon as we tore it down, otherwise I had a feeling it was never gonna get put back up or we were gonna forget how to put it back up. So it's definitely just not something I really wanna pump a bunch of money into. Uh, we'll probably just give it a fresh coat of paint so it doesn't sit out here and rot and then call it good. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna jump into a quick little segment showing you the design for the shed that I have come up with and how I come up with designs for things like this. I'm gonna do a little screen share with my computer and show you guys exactly how these things come to be. So the program that I use is Google SketchUp. It used to be a very basic design tool that has evolved into something pretty incredible. You also used to be able to download it for pretty much free uh, and use it on your computer. But now they have all kinds of plans and pricing depending on how you wanna use this, if you are using it for business, if you're using it for school, whatever it may be, there are a bunch of different plans. But they do offer a free version that is SketchUp free here. The only thing I don't like about it is that it is web based and so basically you're just stuck using it on your browser. It's a little slower and a little more cumbersome than the old app used to be. Let me take you guys into my drawing. This is what I have come up with for the modern shed on the property. We'll kind of spin around a little bit here. You'll notice we've got an eight foot wide by seven foot tall garage door, two little transom windows above it, which I think are gonna make it look a little more modern than if we didn't have those. And then we've got two two foot by four foot windows on the side, and there will be a four foot by four foot window on the back, I just haven't added it yet. Uh, I'll show you guys now actually how kind of easy this software is to use. Uh, it does a lot of really cool things. So I wanna find the center of this wall that we're working on right now to basically build my window off of. So it has a midpoint function. You will see here, right? I can basically draw a line anywhere along this lower portion if I wanted to. But when it highlights that nice little teal mark right there, we know we are at the exact center point of the wall. You also notice this line going up and down is blue. So we're running three axes. We have blue, which is this line right here, and that is 90 degrees up and down. Then we have red, which is this axis, and then green, which is this axis. And you'll notice as you're using the software that your lines turn colors based on what they are aligned with, right? So this line being green means it is 100% parallel to this bottom line right here. So just little things like that make it easy to use. So anyways, we're going to come up 36 inches. Now I could guess where that is, but if you look in this bottom corner right here, bottom right corner, you'll see a bunch of dimensions. So you can actually expand this out to where three feet is if you would like. Uh, and sometimes it's a little hard to dial in without zooming in because you can see it goes all the way up to 16th or you can actually go more precise if you'd like. Or you just use your keyboard and you type in three feet, hit enter, and then we now have a line at three feet. That's what that green mark is. So now we know we're three feet off the ground which is where I want the bottom of my window to be. Now I am going to be making a four foot by four foot window. So off the center, we're gonna come over two feet. I typed that in on my keyboard. You guys probably can't see that. We're gonna come up four feet because it is a four foot tall window. And then we could come over four feet, but you'll notice how it says on face four feet. This thing is really smart. So it knows that I just made a four foot dimension. I'm probably looking to make another four foot dimension. So it actually just gives me like a little spot where it uh, kind of locks in, I guess is the word. And then you'll notice coming down to this line, I can just basically touch it if I wanted to. It did it on its own, but you can touch the spot that you want to line up with. I'll come over, you'll see that there is that little dashed green line there. That tells me I'm exactly in line with uh, this line right here. So this whole area right now is now one nice straight plane. Uh, so we're gonna delete the marks that we don't want. And you can get as gnarly and precise with this as you want or um, not. I mean, I use it mainly just for visual design. Sometimes I use it for dimensions. Uh, so let's see, if we're gonna take like a standard window frame, we're gonna pull that dimension and let's just go with like a two and a half inch frame around it. So this little tool right here takes any shape and you can basically just like 
mimic it, but um, like inside or outside, right? I don't know the exact word I'm looking for there, but uh, we do that for that. And then if we wanted to look cool, this tool right here will allow us to basically indent this in as if it were actually a window there. So super simple, as you can see, SketchUp is like a really cool tool for stuff like this. It's very basic if you want it to be, or it can be very, very complex. So now we're going to, let's see, let's just copy our glass there so you can do different textures, different finishes. So this is what the shed is gonna look like. I've opted for no windows on the tree side. Again, the four foot by four foot, two foot by four foot, which I think tall skinny windows look a little bit more modern. And then uh, a black and white theme. I believe we're going with stucco, that is my plan. I don't want anything flammable next to the side of the house. So stucco is going to be the ticket. And then a metal roof, which this roof looked metal. Let's see, we have a little metal texture here. Uh, you used to be able to change the color of certain textures. And I don't know how to do that on this web-based one, but basically there's your metal roof. Um, but just imagine that in it sweet black metal roof. And then there's little little inconsistencies like this line right here, don't worry about that. Uh, if you're using it like I am just for a quick visual, it's not a big deal. If you're using this to like 3D model, you should probably fix that issue. But just to show you guys, it's a little more difficult, but I can build this super, super quick, right? So we're gonna go 10 foot, comma, 12 foot. That's basically how you tell it, 10 by 12 on this. And if you look in the bottom right corner, that's where I typed it in, hit enter. It makes us a 10 foot by 12 foot rectangle. We are then going to take our tool, let's see here, we're gonna find it, the offset tool, and we're going to come in about, let's just say three and a half inches, right? We'll go 3.5 inches. We're just simulating that that is our framing lumber. Then we wanna bring the roof up. So on these three walls, we're gonna go eight foot tall, give or take, so we're gonna go eight foot, boom. Now we need this front wall, I want that to be nine foot tall. So we're gonna to have to basically isolate this wall, boom. Boom, there we go. We have now made that its own entity and we're gonna take that up. Ooh, uh, come on, there we go. Uh, another foot, one foot, there we go. So now we are at nine feet in the front. Now here's where we gotta get a little creative. If you're better at this than I am, uh, it's probably no big deal, but we're gonna make our roof section. So from there, we have a sloped roof, but I want it to stick out two feet. So if you see when it changes to purple, that means I'm on the same plane as this. So we're gonna come out and I'm just gonna type in my two feet. Again, if you look in the bottom right corner, you'll see where we come over, two feet. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Let's connect to there. And then from there, it's a little bit of a weird angle. So bear with me. Again, without a mouse, it's a little hard to navigate around. So I'm trying to get it to lock in on this angle and turn purple there, we'll wait for it, there we go. And then we're gonna go two feet, perfect. Now we are going to connect those dots. And then on the sides, I'm also going to come out two feet. So on the same method, we're gonna come out here. Now we're on the red axis, which you see how that line is red. We're gonna go two feet. And then what's cool is, again, you can lock onto that point, bring it over, and that'll keep me locked in on that axis. But we're not gonna use that right now because we need to come over two feet first. But see how it says on red axis two feet? It knows that we just did that. And we're probably gonna to wanna to use that measurement again. So we'll do the same thing over here. Look at that, two feet locks me in. Coming down here, two feet, bring it up. And then in the back, I think we're gonna overhang just one foot, give or take, maybe a little bit more. But for the sake of this, one foot. Come to the other side, sake of this. Again, I really should have brought a mouse for this, but let's see, let's get it onto the purple axis. There we go, one foot, boom, connect those. Bada bing, bada boom, easy, okay. Now we're gonna erase some of these lines to make this one piece. Sometimes you gotta be careful on the lines that you erase because you will erase the walls because this line is the top line of that wall. Well, maybe it didn't do there. Oh, yep, there you go. See how it didn't fill it in? But if we put that line back, we still have this area filled in. Um, and again, there's workarounds for a lot of stuff, but we're not gonna focus too heavy on that right now. Then let's just say we do this out of a two by six. So we'll go, we'll go six inches because by the time you put the roofing on, we're six inches. We'll bring that up to match. And there is our roof. Now, if we wanna do a garage door, what I like to do again is we find our center point, boom, all the way up, and then we're gonna do a seven, or is that an eight foot wide? I think that's eight foot wide. So we're gonna come over four feet, and that gave me a little dot right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this other side, which boom, four feet, and then we're gonna go seven foot tall. Oh, 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 oh. My seven doesn't really work on my keyboard, so let's try this again. All right, seven foot tall, there we go. 
come over, see how it automatically grabs that point down there, knowing we're going to come over to the point that we already made. It just makes things super, super easy. Then we come over, erase our lines that we just put in for reference, and for looks, where's my little offset tool? I feel like I lose this thing all the time. Where are you, offset tool? I don't know, there we go. Keep losing it. All right, let's just throw like a little, I don't know if I came in or went out. Let's go out. Do like a three inch border there. Boom, done. Erase these bottom lines because we don't need them. And then we're just going to set this in just a hair for a little dramatic effect. And then while we're at it, we'll bump out this little trim piece just a little bit. There we go. All right, now for the windows, we're gonna come all the way up on this side. We're gonna come all the way up on this side. I think I did those windows 12 inches tall. So we'll go center line, we'll come up six inches six inches is right there boom same thing over here we come down to six inches come over perfect we find our center line to center line easy day then we're going to erase these lines we're not going to use come in here and we will trim this out it's not going to be a true 12 inches at this point they'll be a little bit shorter but you guys will get the idea so let's just come in to there Come in to there. All right, perfect. We're just going to call that good enough for now. Then on these side windows, again, similar thing. I came in, found my center point. Go up. And then I came over here, found my center point. Went up. Center point again. Now remember, this is the center point in between the new lines that I just put. Then from here, we're going to come up three feet for the bottom of our window. Bring it on over. And let's just connect this all the way through. Then we're going to come up four feet because that is the height of our window, which is right there. Bring that all the way over. And then we are going to come over a foot and a foot because these are going to be, oops, these are going to be two foot wide windows. So there is our foot. And if you notice now, where is it at? There we go. It is already grabbing that we are working at a foot. So now all I have to do is just drag it over till it clicks over to a foot. You kind of see how that little point just like drops there. I don't know, attaches itself to it. Don't know what the proper term is, but all right, there we go. Super simple. We now have our windows with our window layout. We'll delete all of our little reference lines that we put on here. Actually, that top one we're probably gonna need. Oh, no, maybe not. All right, get rid of all of this. Easy day, easy day. Then we take our offset tool now that we know where to find it. Let's just come out 2.5 inches. Same on this side. You don't have to type it in the second time. You can just touch the other one. and It'll match perfectly as long as they are on the same plane. Now we're going to inset these a little bit, just to give it that look of an inset window. And similar to this offset, all I have to do is touch it on the surface I want to match. It'll match perfectly. All right, so let's just give you guys a quick little overview. Then you can come in on the color side and the glass. You can select different types of glass look that you want, uh, a little bit cloudy if you would like. Uh, there's just a bunch of different things you can do. You can select colors. You want to do your trim black like I did. Easy peasy, do all the trim, every face. Um, I should have made those bump out a little bit, but you guys get the point. It's a super quick, easy way to draw something up and just get an idea of what you want. That's what I like about it is sometimes I have these ideas that I'm like, I don't know if that's gonna look quite right. And then I draw them up on SketchUp and I'm like, nah, that actually does work out pretty well. So super cool software. Again, gives you guys an idea. That is what we're going to be working with right there and what we're going to be building. And hopefully uh, it looks just as cool in person as it does uh, you know, on SketchUp. So we are at Home Depot and we've got our load of lumber right there that we need to get into this trailer. This trailer is only 14 foot long and those are 16 footer two by sixes sitting on top right there. So hopefully we get a decent forklift operator that can get these into here. We'll just leave the doors open. We'll just, uh, and we'll strap them together. I do miss my deck over right now, but I left that with Jay with the single cab and uh, up in Sacramento. So we're just working with what we got here. But I think we'll do it as long as we've got a good forklift operator that doesn't want to just try to unload these one by one. We don't want to do that. You should be able to swing this in. What I've seen them do here at Home Depot is if they only have one forklift and not two operators, they'll swing them in sideways, set part of the load here. Out here, they'll put the other part of the load on one of the flat carts and then they get behind it and then they can push the whole thing in. This guy seemed a little nervous about doing that, but uh, we'll see if we can convince him.
Alrighty, well, the kid did pretty good. So we are good to go. We've got our doors ratchet strapped on there. Stay. Uh, back to the ranch we go. Alrighty, first things first, we need to move Dedek's Jeep so we can get back the trailer up as close as we can. Oh, we left the concrete mixer in the way. All right, well, we'll figure that out later. But I know the Jeep is gonna need a jump start. She is dead because everything out here with batteries dies. And I did not disconnect the batteries like I should have. Alrighty, let's see. There's been a cat living in here. Oh, yep, there you are. Jeez. What's up, kitty? Hello. I'm oh, sorry, I'm gonna move your Jeep. Is that okay? Yeah? Alright. This is one of the uh, cats that has just shown up on the property and lives here now. He's super cool though. But he does enjoy living in Dedek's Jeep. <laughs> Turn the fans on. We'll just kind of fill the spot where the single cab lived with the Jeep for now. Now, first things first, before we start framing, we've got to get all of our forms stripped off. So we'll pull out the screws on our stakes. And as you guys know, I'm hard on all of my tools. The Harbor Freight Hercules Brushless Impact has been a freaking awesome tool. Don't take my word for it. Go try out one of these Hercules tools. I'm telling you guys. I'm a devoted Milwaukee fan. And the Hercules tools are on par, if not sometimes better than some of the Milwaukee tools that are out there. I'm not just saying that either. Fun fact, Harbor Freight does not pay influencers. And I just realized I didn't show you guys how the slab turned out after it got absolutely rained on like crazy. Uh, you can see it's got basically a sand finish on it. Just a, a very inconsistent sand finish. So if you guys see when we do decorative concrete, sand finish is one of my favorite finishes. We spray a material on top of it called top cast. What that is, is it's a surface retardant. So it keeps that creamy smooth layer when we trowel it from uh, fully curing. And then the next day we come and we wash that off and it exposes the layer just below it. Well, the rain kind of did a little bit of that for us in just a very inconsistent way. So this thing just got a dimpled sand finish on it. It probably looks a little rougher on camera than it is in person. It's not bad at all. And again, it's a shed floor, so it's not the end of the world. We use the OSHA approved steel toe slides. Let's try and get these stakes out. These ones we had to screw from this side into the stakes because of the wall being in the way. So the stakes are attached. Yeah, there we go. This one all comes out as one. Now, I don't typically give the uh, employees over at Home Depot a whole lot of credit, but number one, that kid pulled off loading the trailer pretty well. Uh, I gotta give him credit for that. And number two, we actually have the boards we're gonna use first, our bottom plates on top of the stack. And that's very nice because obviously we're gonna use them first. Now granted, these two by sixes, uh, we're not gonna use those. Those are actually for the roof, so those will be last, but uh, there's not that many. We'll just stack those off to the side, but let's pull out our bottom plates and let's get those marked out and cut, ooh, that one's pretty rough. I will say, ordering at Home Depot has become like one of my new favorite things because I show up, it's already strapped. The only crappy thing is you don't get to sit there and cherry pick your lumber. So for the very important pieces, um, I'm probably gonna actually pick lumber separately, but if you're doing bulk stuff like this, like it's no fun sitting there picking out 50 two by fours in the aisle of Home Depot. So they already did it for me. That's what's all of those bottom studs right there. Just order a little bit extra. That way you can kind of throw out or return the boards that really look like crap. Now, keep in mind, I always preface these types of videos. I am not a framer by trade. So take everything I tell you guys in this video with a grain of salt. It may not be the exact ways to do things properly, but it works for me. These bottom plates are pressure treated because we are in direct contact with concrete. And if you guys don't know, concrete can actually wick up moisture. We didn't put a vapor barrier underneath this slab. We could have, but it's not something you typically do on like garage slabs. The main foundations of houses, they do have vapor barriers underneath them because typically you're going to be putting some type of flooring on top and you don't want water coming up underneath your flooring. So when you're in direct contact with concrete like this, you're gonna to wanna to use a pressure treated bottom plate from here on up. Everything will just be standard lumber. I'm gonna start with the easiest wall first. That is this side wall that has has no windows in it. Maybe a mistake to not put a window in this wall, but really you're gonna have the tree right here. The window's gonna get disgusting from the tree and all the sap and stuff just kind of leaking off of it. If there's sap in a orange tree, not really sure, but um, I don't think it needs one over here. And black windows are significantly more expensive than white framed windows. So being that we're matching the house, which has all black frame windows, you know, trying to stay in like a not $10,000 shed budget range, 
I uh, opted just to omit that window. So we'll have the two windows here, the one window here, and then our two front windows above the garage door three or however we decide to do that when we go to frame it. But anyways, let's jump on wall number one, the simplest one. We are going to be framing uh, these eight foot tall, eight foot, eight foot, and then the front wall will be nine foot or somewhere around those ranges. Oh, and it doesn't take long for the cats to figure out something new is going on. First wall is up and now we're starting to really see the height of this thing. So, so I'm using eight foot studs, which means by the time you have the bottom plate on there, we are an inch and a half taller than that. And then by the time you put our double up top plate, so there'll be about eight foot, four and a half, give or take, to where the, the lid is gonna be the ceiling inside. Um, again, this was the easy wall. I probably should have did the blocking wall that was down on the ground. But uh, yeah, that's again, not a framer. My mind doesn't really work in framer. It just works in put something up so I can actually see what something looks like. I'm gonna find a little bit of our roof overhang. The stucco guy's probably not gonna be too stoked. We'll have to trim this tree back a little bit. Thankfully, these it's already been trimmed, so these are all just new little saplings that can pretty easily get cut off. But it's gonna be a good size. I think I'm pretty happy with it. I know a lot of people said I should have gone bigger, and at some point, we're doing bigger, guys. Trust me, it's gonna be a big shop. There's gonna be other garages. Like, all that's gonna happen at some point. We're just getting by for now until we have hundreds of thousands of dollars of disposable income to spend on the bigger stuff. I decided to jump on this wall next. So I went ahead and did all of my layout. For anybody that's framed anything before, this is common knowledge, but for people that haven't, the best thing to do is to mark your layout on your bottom plate, which is our pressure treated. Take your top plate, put it right next to it, and then transfer all of your marks. Now, when you're doing windows, certain studs aren't gonna go all the way up, right? You have your kink studs, you have your jack studs, you have your trimmers. Not all of those go all the way up. So again, being that my brain doesn't exactly work, in frame or brain um, I have to ride it out and kind of take my time and do it a little bit slowly so I don't cut the wrong thing but, but you'll see we've got our two foot window which goes from there to there so I like a jack stud that the sill sits on top of so that is gonna be our 34 and a half we're gonna end up 37 and a half off the ground I wanted to be just a hair above 36 in case I put a 36 inch workbench in um, and I put a countertop on it we're gonna be right at like the bottom of the sill give or take so 34 and a half is gonna be our jack, so that's gonna hold our sill plate. Then we're gonna have another stud that's gonna hold our header. That is gonna be at seven foot because we are four foot higher from our inch and a half we add to that, which is 36. So we need to go four foot higher than 36. That is seven foot. And then we've got our king stud, which goes the full height at eight foot. And since we're assembling this all on the ground, we kind of have to get it all right now. We have to do all the math properly now. So I've done that for both of those. And then we've also got our regular stud layout going through here, which are all those that are transferred from the top and the bottom. Now remember certain ones like this seven foot one right here is not gonna go all the way to the top. Uh, neither is this one. I don't know why I transferred that line there. It'll make more sense once we get this all laid out. So let's start cutting and getting everything laid out.
Alrighty, second wall is up. Uh, it's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. This is now gonna give us a full kind of idea on what it's gonna be like squeezing past here. If you remember when we were deciding to build this thing, we'd originally were going to parallel the house, but then that puts it wonky with that wall, and then we decided let's just kind of kick it wonky and follow the wall instead of the house. It opens up this area a little bit more for some light to get into that window, but it's also going to be shading that window pretty well, which is what the old patio cover used to do. So I think it's gonna be a win-win. And we have a nice open space here. We could put like a little gate here, or we could put the gate on the back side right there, depending on where we want. This thing is tall. Eight foot walls are, are pretty hefty for a shed, but uh, I think things gonna be the ticket. I wanna see when we do that nine foot wall on the front. I mean, she's really gonna be we're just going to be up there. We might go 10 foot. Maybe we'll do like a two foot rake from front to back instead of the one foot, which is what I had originally planned. This is as far as I'm getting though for today. You can see the sun is setting behind me. I'm not the fastest framer in the world. Uh, I still got to do my least favorite part, which is all of the fire blocking doo -doo 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 -doo, all down there. So we will jump back on tomorrow. Well, last night we had a bunch of wind and rain come through. Um, I'm glad I threw this extra brace on the wall because this one would have gone right into that window. I did, however, somehow leave my nail gun out in the rain and I'll be damned y'all. Milwaukee. You know, I'm a big fan. This thing got poured on all night and she still fires perfectly. That's a relief because I don't want to have to buy another one of these. They're not cheap. Today we're going to move on to the most complicated wall, which is the garage door wall, the 10 foot, well, nine foot wall. I got to do some finagling when we're building it because we're going to have the two windows above the garage door. We need to transfer the weight of the roof onto the framing, not onto the windows. It's not gonna be a super heavy roof. Again, it's a metal roof, so I'm not too concerned about it, but most of the weight is gonna be on this front and this back wall, so we need to try to account for it. Thanks to Joe for helping me move this hefty wall. Uh, we now, oh geez, I've, oh, that was my tape measure. Thought I'd drop my sunglasses again. I've dropped these things like 50 times today. So the main, most important, biggest pain in the butt wall is in. This is the nine foot plus bottom plate, two top plates, uh, nine foot, four and a half wall. I honestly went back and forth on omitting these windows. I was gonna just not do it because to support this main piece going across the top, which is gonna hold all of the weight on the roof, it was gonna take some creative framing and slash or the windows. I was thinking we we're gonna have to really shrink to put in a nice header going across, but ended up making it work. So we've got our four by eight going across for the garage door header. And then I took a four by six that I just had left over, ran that across up above underneath those two top plates. Then I took an off cut of this four by eight and put it in the center there to kind of bridge the gap between the two. Again, not a framer, probably very wrong way to do it, but it should hold up just fine. Uh, 
in my very professional calculation. We also went ahead and did three two by fours there. That's gonna carry the load down to these. I probably should have done that a little bit differently, but this came to be after I had decided on what I was gonna do here. There is still gonna be a two by six that goes on here. This is the trim piece that goes around the garage door. So um, this opening is not a true eight foot opening. It's actually bigger to account for a two by six on each side and then a two by six down below. So we're almost worked out to where the gap from the roof to the top of the window is the same as the roof to the bottom of the window. It's very close. It's within a quarter of an inch to where I don't think anybody's going to notice. I still have no idea how I'm going to do that detail because again, they don't make windows that size. I don't really want to pay for custom windows unless they're cheap. I'm going to go get those priced out, but we might just be insetting a piece of glass and trimming around it and hopefully trying to make it look like these. Again, that's kind of why I wanted to get rid of those windows, but I think it's a very important detail looks wise when it comes to making this shed look modern versus omitting those. So here's to me always doing things much more difficult in the sake of making them look cool uh, when I probably shouldn't, but it's looking pretty sick. I'm very, very excited about it. It is tall. It is very tall. And when this roof goes on, it sticks out two feet. It's going to be sticking out at an angle. So it's going to be even taller. I think we're going to call it at this. As you can see, the sun is setting behind me. Again, another beautiful Rhino Ranch sunset. Hopefully it changes colors there and you guys can see it. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like and get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com if you want anything like the sweet Workfort canvas jacket that is keeping me warm today because it is freezing out here. Uh, you can find those workfortapparel.com decals, hats, key tags, hoodies, uh, we sold out of the bacon jerky, but we have uh, our spicy beef jerky still in stock. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.